Is it agreed that the committee proceed to clause by clause consideration of Bill S-219, an act to deter Iran-sponsored terrorism, incitement to hatred, and human rights violations? I move, colleagues, that this committee recommend that we not go to clause by clause and that Bill S-219 be not further proceeded with. Colleagues, this bill is seriously flawed for at least three reasons. <coughs> First, it will not accomplish its stated purpose. Second, it will damage Canada's efforts to re-establish diplomatic relations with the Islamic Republic of Iran. Third, it will have unintended consequences for a variety of Canadian interests in Iran, including adverse effects on many Canadians of Iranian descent. I believe the flaws in this bill are too fundamental and too many to warrant the further attention of honourable senators in this committee or of our colleagues in the chamber as a whole. I would preface my remarks by saying that I acknowledge and respect the sincere intent of the bill's sponsors and its supporters to deter Iran-sponsored terrorism, incitement to hatred and human rights violations. I share these objectives, but disagree strongly about the efficacy and the wisdom of Bill S-219. Allow me to briefly review some of the witness testimony to support my reasons for this motion. The first has to do with efficacy. We heard from a number of experts who testified that the proposed bill is very unlikely to change the behavior of the Iranian regime. You will recall Professor George Lopez from the Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies, who said, and I quote, I think the likelihood is very low because you don't have the volume and diversity of economic interactions, and unless you are engaged at a secondary level with subsidiaries and others of your country that, from Europe or North America, are engaged with Iran, things that are not readily apparent, I think your leverage is at a relatively low level. If anything, the proposed bill has the potential to encourage antithetical behavior <coughs> due to lack of incentives for the Iranian regime to be in compliance. And I quote Richard Nephew, senior research scholar at Columbia University, who testified, and I quote, simply put, as I read it, this bill requires Iran to make progress on such a great variety of bad acts that it removes the Canadian government's ability to respond to and reward improvement in any one particular element. All for one and one for all is a good rallying cry, but in sanctions practice, it often leads to the absence of any material progress along multiple fronts. There is simply no incentive for a foreign government to take the potentially difficult steps necessary to address bad behavior, because they will simply expect the sanctioning state's demands to never cease. Put another way, this legislation could be a roadblock to the Canadian government's ability to incentivize positive change by Iran in areas of terrorism or human rights. I also cite Cheryl Thomas, who submitted a written testimony, uh, a woman who lived and worked in Iran between 2004 and 2012, who said, and I quote, Deeper Canadian sanctions will have no impact on Iran and will do nothing to influence Iran re-human rights violations. Canada can have influence from inside the country by facilitating business, providing educational opportunities, and coordinating with the UN, which has just signed a new four-year UN Development Assistance Framework Agreement with Iran." Unquote. The second reason for my opposition to this bill is the damage that it will do to Canadian efforts to re-engage with Iran. The Canadian government has stated its intention to re-engage with that country in a cautious, step-by-step -step manner. The sanctions proposed under S-219 would seriously impede these efforts. I cite the testimony of Alex Bugaliskis, Assistant Deputy Minister for Europe, Middle East, and Maghreb of Global Affairs Canada. Quote, the government believes that it is through dialogue, not withdrawal and isolation, that it can advance Canada's interests. 
including consular services to Canadians and trade and foreign policy interests, unquote. Further, he says, Bill 219 would likely hinder the re-establishment of normal diplomatic relations with Iran for two reasons. Number one, it would constrain the discretion and therefore the capacity of the government to re-engage with Iran. And two, Iran would likely respond negatively to its introduction. I quote further from Bugaliskis. Ultimately, Bill S-219 would therefore limit the capacity of the government of Canada to pursue and eventually conclude a complex process to re-establish diplomatic ties with Iran. Listen also to the words of Richard Nephew, previously cited from Columbia University, and I quote, My concern is that, in practice, Canada would simply find itself on the margins of international relations with Iran. And George Lopez, also previously cited from the Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies, quote, the more that Western states like Canada and the United States can aggressively establish more diplomatic and political ties, the more we can engage in trade, the more we enhance the prospects that a moderate successor to Rouhani will continue the long process of change. Allow me to also report the opposing position so that you can see how stark the choice is before us. Mr. Sharam Golastane of the Iran Democratic Association has stated before this committee, and I quote, are there any preconditions for engagement with Iran? I would say definitely. All of these things we are discussing in this bill can be preconditions. In other words, supporters of the bill are not even arguing that this bill will not hinder the process of diplomatic re-engagement. They are arguing that there should be no re-engagement unless the conditions of the bill are fully met. This is an extraordinarily hard-line position that runs counter to Canada's reputation for fair-minded diplomacy. The third reason for my opposition to this bill and my suggestion that we recommend to not proceed with it is that it can have unintended consequences. The risk of these unintended adverse consequences are great. I quote Nade Hashemi, director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. Quote, my primary concern is that this bill will prevent Canada from playing a more constructive role in terms of supporting Iranian civil society and the pro-democracy movement within Iran. Further, he says, quote, I believe Bill S-219 is counterproductive. In my reading, it represents quote, more of the same, unquote. Specifically, it continues a pattern of short-term thinking on Iran, scolding it for its bad behavior. I quote also Richard Nephew from the Center for Global Energy Policy at Columbia University. For Canada, because you are more remote and distant, and because trade ties have been fairly modest, potentially aggressive, aggressive steps, especially if not taken in concert with other actors, would mean the Iranians would say, forget it, we don't need to deal with you all that much. And Bijan Ahmadi, president of the Iranian-Canadian Congress, in response to the Special Economic Measures Act, which already imposed sanctions on Iran, and which this bill would seek to expand and strengthen, has said the following. The sanctions imposed by CIMA created often insurmountable barriers for honest and hardworking Iranian Canadians. Many business owners who were dependent on trade between Iran and Canada for their livelihood suddenly found their legitimate business activities rendered illegal. Additionally, banks refused to deal with those who had or were pe perceived to have any financial links to Iran, whether personal or business. This even resulted in the closure of bank accounts of Iranian Canadians, including Canadian citizens, for no other reason than because they hold Iranian citizenship as well. I further quote Mr. Ahmadi, even today, after the government eased some of its sanctions on Iran in February 2016, 
some financial institutions are still applying the same rules and we have received several reports from ordinary Iranian Canadians who have been subjected to discrimination by banks." Unquote. <coughs> Colleagues, more broadly, the unintended consequences extend to missed business opportunities that would benefit ordinary Iranians. Mr. Tabe Tabesin Najad, policy chair of the Iranian Canadian Congress, has said that sanctions have harmed Canadian businesses at large, with a, which have not been able to access Iran's untapped market of 80 million people. As sanctions have been eased on Iran, many international businesses, especially European companies, have entered the Iranian market, while Canadian companies have been lagging behind because of our lack of relations and the uncertainty surrounding our sanctions regime. As members of this committee are aware, a petition in, fa in favor of re-establishing dis diplomatic relations with Iran was posted on the House of Commons website in September 2016. A counter-petition calling for the government to make re-establishment of diplomatic relations with Iran conditional on human rights was posted on the same website one week later. <coughs> the petition in favor of diplomatic re-engagement received 15,781 signatures. 15781 signatures. The petition against diplomatic re engagement was able to muster only 607 signatures. 607. To conclude, I came to this bill with an open mind and I was prepared to give it a full airing in the chamber, even if I did not agree with many of its provisions. In the course of committee hearings, however, I have come to the conclusion that the bill is so deeply and fundamentally flawed that it will not be a good use of Senator's time to have further debate in the chamber. I thank colleagues for indulging my intervention. I appreciate the fact that some of you are willing for this bill to proceed the to the chamber, even though you disagree with it. If that is the committee's will to proceed with the bill, I will of course respect that will the majority decision. But if that happens, I will use my opportunity in the chamber to once again speak against C219. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Senator Wu. I was not aware that you were going to put this motion. So I, and you said you wanted reasons, but actually you put more than the reasons. You put your case before the committee. There is one rule that I just looked up and I've conferred that we could proceed for, uh, uh, to discuss this motion and we could do so pursuant to, help, where am I now? Uh, rule 1216.1D, which would allow the committee to move in camera in order to discuss this motion, or we can continue in public, whichever the wish of the uh, group is. I, I have to give you all the rules so that you know. So is it your wish to continue in a, in a public debate now? Mm -hmm. Yes? Agreed? Agreed. All right. Um, I have a list of, you've made your submission, <coughs> and so now I will turn to my list. Senator Down. And uh, thank you, uh, Senator Wu, for that extensive overview of uh, testimony we've heard. I share almost all your views except the conclusion. My view is it should not be this small group of senators deciding what the Senate uh, considers. Uh, my view would be to move it from this committee to the Senate. Uh, in the Senate, it would be my position currently with the testimony I have heard to come to the same conclusions you came to but I don't think this group should exclude other senators from participating in, the, in that decision, and whatever that decision will be, and therefore I'm in favor of us passing it to the Senate uh, for further debate and discussion. Thank you. Senator Bayak, and then Senator Housakis. No. Or, you didn't? Okay, Senator Housakis. I, I will be very brief and just echo the, the comments of, of our deputy chair. I, I agree totally. I think this bill has been 
uh, extensively studied at this committee. We've had a number of witnesses. I think it warrants a, a, a debate uh, uh, at the higher level of the Chamber of the Whole. And I do appreciate Senator uh, Wu coming to the committee and articulating a point of view. But <clears throat> in all fairness, after a number of hearings and exchanges with witnesses have taken place at this committee, if you wanted to make a compelling argument as a witness, I think any senator is welcome to come before committees and do that. Uh, I think now is not the appropriate time to curtail this uh, and, and prevent further debate from, from taking place in the Senate. So I, I encourage this committee to take Senator Wu's uh, motion to a vote. All right, uh, Senator Bove and then Senator Gold. I uh, was going to second uh, Senator Wu's motion. Okay. Uh, and no comment further then than Senator Gold. Thank you. Um, for my part, um, and respectfully, I think it was quite appropriate to have brought the motion at this stage. Our opportunity as committee members to discuss things beyond listening to witnesses is circumscribed by time, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to say the least. Um, though I believe that Iran has, is indeed the world's preeminent sponsor of terrorism and inciter of hatred. Um, I actually oppose this bill, albeit on somewhat narrower grounds than my colleague. I think, I, I think the sanctions are simply too blunt um, and impose far too many constraints on the discretion of our government uh, in its delicate challenge of moving forward with Iran. Um, that said, um, though I do not support this bill and will not support it, will be prepared to speak against it on, in the chamber, I would vote to proceed, I would vote to send this to the chamber for a fuller debate. Okay. Right. Senator Coos? There's no hurry for a question. Some of us haven't spoken yet. Be patient. You're young. You have lots of time. Um, colleagues and chairman, um, this procedure that uh, Senator Wu has invoked has been used many times. And uh, I've been on committees where that has been used. And it has been used in the committee, contrary to what Senator Wusakis thinks, because the committee makes the choice not to defeat the bill in a committee, but to recommend to the Senate that it not be uh, further uh, proceeded with. So the, the, uh, Senator Wu's concerns are very valid and, and very real. And um, I don't much like the bill, despite the fact that it's a, it comes from a very dear friend, Senator Takacha, but I really do not like the bill. And I suspect that there are large and numerous uh, doubts in, in many senators' minds respecting this bill. And um, the, the, the issue before you, Madam Chair, is how to, how to move forward on his proposal. That is the real challenge uh, before us, not the outcome but how to move forward justly and judiciously with his proposal, mm -hmm. which is, ex is an extremely valid one procedurally. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify, <clears throat> it is not a question of whether <clears throat> Senator Wu's motion is valid or not. I was not aware of it, and I want to be absolutely precise that I follow the rules correctly, and that is why I'm trying to bring everything to the attention of the committee. It was compounded with the fact also that there was some difference of opinion whether we were starting at 4.15 or when the Senate uh, ended. So that's why all of it is there. It is not to uh, talk about the motion. Um, sometimes we get an alert from the senator, and that's very helpful to the chair. But that's not necessary. Uh, so I, I appreciate that we are following the rules. I hope everyone else feels comfortable with that. And uh, I'm going to go to Senator Wells now and then Senator St. Germain. Thank you very much, Chair, and, uh, and thank you, colleagues, for, for, uh, for continuing this discussion. I've spoken in the past on a number of issues. One is specifically ballistic missile defense. Uh, and two of the countries that come up more often than others as, uh, as, as our greatest threats uh, are uh, North Korea and, and Iran. 
Iran is well known as a state sponsor of terrorism, perhaps one of the leading state sponsors of terrorism. <coughs> I'm uh, not in favor of policies of appeasement, uh, as, a, as, uh, as, as they just haven't worked, and I think history has shown that these policies haven't worked, and I think withdrawing um, a strong condemnation of, uh, of what Iran is doing uh, is part of a policy of appeasement. So for that, uh, for that reason alone, I would, uh, I would like to see this bill go through. Uh, but I also welcome to have that discussion on the Senate floor. Thank you, Senator St. Germain. Thank you, Chair. Perhaps I was not clear enough when we talked about this in the library earlier on. I said that Senator Wu would be against the study. I was thinking of a, the, of a motion, and so I believe that uh, you're right in saying that it's normal that the chair be informed. If I get a heads up, I can do my homework faster. Okay, but <laughs> je, moi, moi, je considère que c'est normal, et c'est dans ce sens-là que... I consider that to be normal, and that's what I said to you, but I don't think I was clear enough. All that to say that I think that a uh, procedure does exist, and to follow this procedure would now be to move to a vote or after all senators have had their say. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to make any comments or speak to the issue? Or are you ready to have the motion put? Question. Question. Question? Do you want the motion read again or are you aware of it and are prepared to? Okay. All right. The clerk is I don't think you have it here, so no. can you read it, Senator Wu? Oh, that's it. Please. We're absolutely I certain that we have the right one mm -hmm. here. Um, I move that this committee recommend that Bill S-219 be not further proceeded with. All right, is everyone clear on the motion? Are you yeah, ready for... Yes, that's right. So this committee would tell the Senate right. that we... But the report of, of this committee will say that. That's, the, what, that's the effect of this motion. Well, that's how it works. Is everyone clear? All right. Um, so all those in favor? Motion now, because you clarified it even more. The whole motion. Well, I don't Please. have, uh, I just have the but record. Bore has, but Bore, I'm sure he could lend his copy. Pardon me? I'm sure he has a copy of it. He could lend it to you. But that would be helpful. I read all I have in my notes. Um, but maybe I, all maybe, that I received was in. He could read it slowly, and Maria could capture yeah, yeah. it in her fast short. We're time. putting a lot of pressure on a new clerk, so. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll read it again, and I'll amend it slightly based on Senator Kuhl's uh, helpful intervention. I move that this committee recommend to the Senate that Bill S219 be not further <laughs> proceeded with. That's clear. Is that clear? Yes. So, it, are we now clear on the motion recommending that the Senate not proceed with Bill S-2919? Chair, the, the motion has to be deposited in both official languages, right? Uh, are you sure, Shaila? <coughs> A committee motion? Because it's on record through translation? There are no requirements for motions, I understand. There yeah. are for amendments. I'm just verifying. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, question. It's just like... Yeah, it's just a <coughs> Okay. The 
report to the committee will include this recommendation. In other words, the report says to the says to the Senate that we should not we should not further continue it. I mean, the pur the purpose of the report is to deliver that. Well, as I understand it, step by step, this is a motion put forward to the committee recommending that the bill, that uh, we recommend to the Senate that the bill not be further proceeded with. Okay, so we vote on that. But if, if it passes, we then have the obligation that uh, the report to the Senate must state the reasons for this. And if it doesn't, well, then we proceed with the clause by clause. So as long as everyone is cleared with that, we're working our way through the procedure here nicely. So any further comments? Uh, all those in favor? I presume we're going to have... Um, has anyone requested a recorded vote? Yes, do you want a... Okay, first I'll ask verbally. Yeah. It's, if it's such a serious matter, I think it should be debated some more. Well, every uh, senator has the opportunity to debate it. I've asked for any further debate, uh, and I have not received any, and so I've asked whether you've been prepared uh, to uh, move with the motion, and I understood you were. Now, normally, I would say all those in favor, all those opposed. <coughs> if someone wishes a roll call, someone should say so. Okay. Voice vote first. All those, you, you're requesting a roll call. Okay. It's agreed, then we will go to a roll call. Okay. The Honorable Raynell Andrichuk. No to the motion. The Honorable Lynn Bayak. No. No. I'm no. <laughs> I heard two no's there. The Honorable Pat Bovey. Yes. The motion. The Honorable Ann Cools. Yes. The Honorable Percy Down. No. The Honorable Mark Gold? No. The Honorable <coughs> Leo Sakos? No. Okay. I'm against the move. The Honorable Senator Marwa? Yes. The Honorable Senator No? No. The Honorable Senator O? L'honorable sénatrice Saint-Germain. Abstention. The Honorable David Wells. No. The Honorable Senator Who? Yes. So no, eight, yes, four, abstentions, one. And the nays have it. And if I understand the rules and no one objects to it, the next step is that we would proceed then to clause-by-clause uh, clause consideration of Bill S-219, an act to deter Iran-sponsored terrorism, incitement to hatred and human rights violations. Uh, is it agreed or not? Agreed? Uh, shall the title stand postponed? Agreed. On division? On division? Shall the preamble stand postponed? Uh, shall clause one, which contains the short title, stand postponed? <coughs> On division? Uh, shall clause two carry? On division, shall clause three carry? Shall clause four carry? 
Shall clause five carry? Shall clause six carry? Shall clause seven carry? Shall clause eight carry? Shall clause nine carry? Shall clause 10 carry? Shall clause one which contains the short title carry? Shall the preamble carry? Agreed on division, <coughs> on division. Shall the bill carry? <coughs> oh, shall the title carry? I missed one, sorry. Shall the title carry? On division. Shall the bill carry? Great. Does the committee wish to consider appending observations to the report? Shall we go in camera to discuss that? All right. Uh, so that means we uh, will have to clear the room and change to in camera before we proceed back. All right. Okay, so uh, we can have a motion to have staff of senators uh, stay in the room. Everyone else will have to vacate. Can we suspend just one minute? Okay, we're going to suspend for one minute. 